Chromium OS is based on Gen 2, previously being based on Ubuntu. And then the way that most people use Chromium OS is through Chrome OS. And it seems like there is a lot of people who naively think that if something is based on a Linux distro, then it has to work on Linux. Turns out, that's not actually the case. So that raises an interesting question about what Chrome OS actually is. Some people out there want to describe Chrome OS as a Linux distro. Now, while gathering OS statistics is certainly not the easiest thing because, you know, Linux is about privacy and all that fun stuff, so there's no, like, centralized place to gather these numbers, judging by the heuristics we have, if Chrome OS is a Linux distro, it is by far the most popular Linux distro, beating things easily like Ubuntu. And while in the overall market, Windows by far has a bigger market share, in the education space, Chrome OS has a massive foothold, and there is a lot of people out there who would love to see Linux used in this space, used to actually show people how to use a computer, not to just be someone who owns a computer. And until Google feels comfortable with their future project, Chrome OS is without a doubt Linux. No one is going to argue that Chrome OS is not based on Linux, but I would argue that Chrome OS is not a Linux distro. Just as I would not argue that Android is a Linux distro or any specific ROM is a Linux distro. And I like to think of this as the distinction between the capitalized Unix, referring to the Unix trademark, the only capitalized Unix systems are those recognized by the open group, and then the lowercase Unix, referring to the more general term. So a operating system like Linux, for example, that is not a capitalized Unix system, but it is the lowercase Unix, more commonly used as Unix-like. So an operating system like Chrome OS or Android would certainly be Unix-like, but under this analogy, whatever you want to call it, would also be a Linux-like operating system. I consider these another step along the Unix timeline. Now, forgive the fact this diagram is a little bit out of date, but it certainly does a job at demonstrating what we need. So just like how macOS is a step along from next step, and the next step is a step along from BSD, we can certainly say that macOS stemmed from BSD. That is a true statement. But something we would never say is that macOS is a next step distribution, or next step is a BSD distribution, or OpenBSD is a NetBSD distribution. Things like this doesn't really make any sense as statements. There's something clearly different about macOS and next step that makes macOS its own separate operating system. So then the question becomes, what is a Linux distro? When we say Linux distribution, what do we actually mean? So there are two definitions that we can work with, and I generally lean towards the second one. So the first definition is the literal definition. A Linux distribution is a package that distributes the Linux kernel. So that would mean Android is a Linux distro. All the Android ROMs are Linux distros. Any sort of package that distributes Linux is going to be a Linux distro. The problem with this is then we have to define at what point does the source code of Linux stop being the source code of Linux and becomes its own separate project? Because every distro out there that we accept are distros have various patches. So clearly patches don't make the kernel a separate thing. At what point does the kernel become a separate kernel? So if I take the Linux kernel source code right now, however many million lines it is, and I start adding features, removing features, deleting sections of the code that I'm never going to use, at what point have I made enough changes that that kernel that exists there, let's say we keep it as a kernel and don't change it into a completely separate project, at what point does that kernel become a kernel that is not a Linux kernel? But what I do know is everything we consider a Linux distribution does all of these things to the kernel already, and we consider them Linux. So there has to be a threshold somewhere. Now, as for the second definition, this is more about the way that we practically look at distros. The reason why we consider things like Arch and Debian to be the same OS, even the way they're configured out of the box, is completely different. 
So a Linux distribution requires two things. The first thing is obviously the distribution of a Linux kernel. In this case though, what has been done to the kernel, how it works, isn't really the main focus. So we all know that Linux itself is not an operating system. The way we say Linux is an OS is more of a colloquial thing. Linux is just a kernel and the kernel is not super useful. So what a Linux distro does is provides the framework to make the kernel useful. It provides things like your user land software, it provides your logging, your init system, your desktop environment, maybe an installation script and all of this fun stuff. So with just this requirement, you can certainly argue that things like Chrome OS and Android are Linux distros. But the second requirement I consider far more important. That is interoperability with existing distros. If there was only one Linux distribution, let's say it's the GNU slash Linux distro. Sure, the kernel would exist in its own separate thing in the background, but when we think about the operating system, no one would think about the term distro. They would just say, oh, the operating system is GNU slash Linux. But that's not the way it is. We have Arch, we have Debian, we have OpenSUSE, Fedora, PopOS, Ubuntu, and thousands of others. But there's one key focus with all of these different distros. If I make software for Arch Linux, I can go and run that software on Debian or OpenSUSE and it will work perfectly fine, assuming I have all of the dependencies installed. And these dependencies, they're not made for, they're not made for one specific distro, they're just made for Linux and then they work on everything we consider a Linux distro. Even things we consider core to the distro experience, like say the package manager. I could take Pac-Man, go and compile that on Ubuntu, and it will work perfectly fine. I could go and compile apt on Arch, that will work fine as well. Should you go and use that? Absolutely not. But there is interoperability. And while in the past, GNU certainly offered a lot of support here, bringing us to a point where basically every distro out there is running the same set of core utils, is running the GNU compiler and things like this. Not every distro is. Things we would consider distros are running things that are not the GNU core utils, but they are core utils in their own right. Maybe they're not using the GNU C compiler, they're using a different C compiler, but it's still a C compiler along with having a kernel that is similar enough that when we target that kernel, we can reasonably expect that any software we write is going to run on anything we consider a Linux distro. And this doesn't require using libraries or high-level languages like Python, which abstract out the idea of an operating system. We can do this with low-level languages like C and C++ and just write code without having to worry about this is the Debian version, this is the Fedora version, this is the Arch version, so on and so forth. And while we can certainly run Linux software on Android and Chrome OS, the same can't really be said in reverse. If we want to run, say, Android software, the best bet we have is hardware level virtualization with something like Anbox. I can't just go and take an APK and then run it on Arch. That's just not going to work. There's nothing I can do there. And as we saw, there are certainly cases where Chrome OS software is not going to run on Linux. And this isn't just this one-off case, it's also the case with something like Steam. So Steam has a Linux version, it is the Linux version, it's not the Arch version or the Ubuntu version or the Fedora version, it's the Linux version and it just works on Linux. But then there's also going to be a separate Chrome OS version of Steam. So Valve's acknowledging the fact that they need to do something separate to make it work on this thing, this operating system that is based on Linux, but is not a Linux distro. Now, don't take this video as me discrediting Chrome OS or saying, oh, if it's not the way that I want desktop Linux to be, then it's not a real distro. That's not what I'm saying whatsoever. I still think Chrome OS is a really cool project and is certainly a popular use of Linux. But when we talk about what Chrome OS is, to make sure that people are not being misinformed about what it's actually capable of, I think we should preface it by saying it is an operating system 
based on Linux, but it is separate from a Linux distro. But you might disagree with me entirely and think that Chrome OS is the best Linux distro out there and think my reasoning makes no sense whatsoever. And I would love to hear why. So if you like the video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, certainly bear pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.